Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Salisa coming to you from the channel Beautifully Me and You. Today, I thought I'd bring you a what's for dinner video. So I've been cooking, cooking. I've been cooking quite a bit more since uh, we've been on quarantine and I also started Weight Watchers Blue Plan. On that plan, I get 30 points per day, but as you know, Weight Watchers, you can fit just about anything into the diet plan that you like. So not only have I been cooking a lot of new recipes, but I've also been trying to tweak some of the older recipes that I have to make them more point friendly. Now, this video includes some recipes that aren't necessarily considered diet foods, but they did work well within the Weight Watchers plan, and I'm including the total points for the meal at the bottom of the screen. My children happen to love each and every recipe that is included in this video, and so I hope you and your family enjoy them too. I still go to work and my children are doing school from home. So when I get home, they're hungry and I am too, and we need something really quick to get on the table. And that's how these meals can fit into your day. If you like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps this video to be suggested to others who might need some recipe ideas as well. Also, Follow me down on Instagram. I put a lot of food inspiration there. I'll put my handle here on the screen and you can find me there. Let's get right into the video. First dinner we'll be making will be chicken bacon Alfredo pizzas. Now these pizzas were a huge success with my family. I didn't have any light mozzarella cheese, but I did have some string cheese. So I just went ahead and grated that and used it. I'm gonna also be using the rest of this Stone Fire Non Rounds package that I have. And then I stir fry some chicken breasts with just some plain seasoning. And I'm gonna be using that as well as Center Cut Bacon by Appleton Farms. And then I'm also gonna be using some shredded Parmesan cheese by Kraft. And I'm just gonna be using a fourth of a cup. And then I have some traditional Alfredo sauce. And um, this is made by Kroger and I'm using that as well. All right, so to get started, I just laid out the rounds. I didn't pre-bake them or anything like that. And I'm just topping them with some of that Kroger brand Alfredo sauce. And I'm using about a tablespoon per round. That seemed to be the perfect amount. Next, I'm gonna to be topping each round with a little bit of shredded mozzarella. Now, I used, I forgot to mention that I used about six uh, string cheese sticks in order to make this amount. So, this is about one string cheese per pizza. The next step is just to top each pizza with a little bit of that grilled chicken. Now, I used only two chicken tenderloins to make this much chicken, so it really is about a tablespoon worth of chicken breast that was just seasoned and pan fried. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that on top of each one of the rounds. And then finally, I'm using six strips of that center cut bacon, and I'm just placing one strip cut up on top of each pizza and then top it with a little bit of that finely grated Parmesan. Once everything was assembled, I went ahead and put them into an oven at 375 degrees for about six minutes. Everything on the pizza was already pretty much cooked so it just needs to all warm up, have the cheese melt, and then they'll be ready to eat. Again, this is a super delicious dinner, very easy to put together, and the kids love these pizzas. Now for them, I serve two of them with a side of salad and ranch dressing, for myself, since I'm on Weight Watchers, I just had one round for six points and served mine with cherries and some celery sticks. Dinner was complete very shortly after getting home from work and that's the kind of dinners that I enjoy most. Now the next dinner might not look so appetizing. It's hamburger and potato casserole, but trust me, it's super tasty. You need one red onion, 
I used a little bit of this on the border Monterey queso. And then you need this Lux Pinto beans with the ham, as well as a can of cream of mushroom soup. I also used some regular sharp cheese for the top, but inside I used some fat-free cheddar just to cut down on the points a bit. And then I used some of these steam and savor bite-sized potatoes. They are really good in calories, here's the macros, but I only needed to use about half of the bag for this casserole. I used one whole pound of 96 lean, 4% fat ground beef, and here's the macros on that if you need to see that. This ground beef ends up only being eight points for the whole pack. To get started, I just started dicing some of the red onion as well as each one of these little small potatoes. Like I said, I only used about half of the package of the small potatoes for the casserole. It was quite a bit. I took a moment to set and preheat my oven to 375 degrees because that's what the casserole needs to cook at and to start the ground beef browning in the skillet. Now I simply seasoned it with a little bit of salt, some garlic paste that I have. I used about a tablespoon of that as well as some pepper. I also added in the diced red onions so that they can brown and cook with the ground beef. Once the ground beef was browned, then I went ahead and added the can of mushroom soup, as well as the can of beans with the juice and then two tablespoons of that nacho cheese sauce. Now I used to make this dish before I joined Weight Watchers and I just would add more cheese. But to cut back on the cheese, I went ahead and added the tablespoons of cheese sauce and then stirred that all together. Once it was all assembled, I realized I needed a little more seasoning, so I added a little bit of the Badia's Complete Seasoning, as well as some Lari Seasoning Salt, and then just continue to stir and allow it to simmer a little bit longer. Now that the mixture was completely done, it's time to go ahead and assemble the casserole. So first I started with a little bit of the beef mixture, about half of it, spread it into a casserole dish, and then I began to layer the sliced potatoes on top of that. Once I had one even layer of those potatoes, I went ahead and put one cup of the fat-free cheddar cheese in the center of the casserole. Sometimes I feel like this cheese just doesn't melt that good. So in the middle of the casserole, I probably won't even notice it. And then I put the rest of the meat mixture on top. Now this is when I realized I probably should have put a layer of potatoes under that first meat mixture so there'd be two layer of potatoes. And once I realized my mistake, I decided just to line the edge of the pan with some additional potatoes because one layer of potatoes is never enough, right? <laughs> so I went ahead and lined the edge and then kind of covered it up with the meat mixture, pushed them down in there and covered them with the meat mixture as well. Once I had that all spread out, then I went ahead and used that last cup of regular sharp cheddar cheese and put that on top. And then I'm gonna cover this with aluminum foil and put it into the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. I took the tin foil off for the last 10 minutes just to let it get a little bit brown on top. And this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. This casserole is really delicious. My kids enjoy it as well, but it is important to let it sit about 10 minutes before you serve it up. And here it is plated with the potatoes, beans, beef, cheese. I know it sounds super weird and it probably looks a little disgusting, but I'm telling you, it is so good. And I top mine with one tablespoon of light sour cream. You must try this. Next up is creamy chicken casserole. Now, another YouTuber had made this as well and she calls it cracked chicken, I think. It's so good though. Okay, bonus time. I saw on TikTok where you can take out the actual tendon in the tenderloin, 
that strip of white tough tendon. So what you do is you put slide it into your fork and you hold it with a paper towel and you pull down on the fork and it pulls it out. If you're grossed out by chicken, I'm sorry for this part, but I'm gonna show you one more time. So you put the little white part in between the fork, grab a paper towel and then pull. And that tough tendon comes out and all you're left with is the clean chicken breast. So to start, I did a whole package of those tenderloins just like that. You'll also need one package of cream cheese. I wish I had light or fat-free cream cheese, but that was all I had on hand. I used garlic and then some of my typical seasonings, lemon pepper, complete seasoning, pepper, and Lari seasoning salt. You'll also need a can of cream of chicken and one pack of ranch dressing mix. The reason why I love this dish is because it's a crock pot meal and we all know how easy and convenient those are. So I put the chicken breast at the bottom of the crock pot, probably about a pound and a half to two pounds of chicken tenderloins. And then I just began to season them with the regular salt, as well as lemon pepper. And then some seasoning salt. and a little bit of the complete seasoning. And then I put about a tablespoon of the squeezable garlic, maybe a teaspoon. And then I sprinkled the package of ranch dressing mix, added the pack of cream cheese, and I used the full pack for this recipe. And finally, I added the one can of cream of chicken soup. And that's it. No liquid is required. You turn it on high. You could probably cook it on low for about six hours, but I cooked mine on high for about three hours. And then when it was done, I used a fork in order to shred it. And it looked just like this. This was my first time making this in the crock pot. And I'm telling you, I understand why she called it cracked chicken. It is so good. There's so many ways you could serve this chicken as well. I served mine over white rice and alongside some green beans that I just stir fried with a little bit of butter and some garlic. It was a very delicious meal. It's sure to be in rotation. And finally, I made a ravioli pepperoni lasagna. This is another super quick, easy meal. I used some turkey pepperoni, shredded mozzarella cheese, the last of a jar of tomato basil garlic prego sauce that I had, and then some three cheese ravioli that I bought at the store. My daughter actually assembled this whole meal and I was trying to record her doing it. All she did was put about a fourth of a cup of the prego sauce at the bottom of the pan and then lined it with the cheese ravioli, layered that with some of the pepperoni, and then put some shredded cheese on top, shredded mozzarella, and then did the process all over again. Another layer of sauce, another layer of ravioli, some pepperoni, and then top the whole thing off with cheese. That's one thing that I love about these layered casseroles, and you see I have a couple of them in this video. Um, I'm looking for things that my daughter can put together while I'm at work, or things that I can pre-assemble and just have her put in the oven since she's homeschooled now. I put it into the oven covered for about 30 minutes and then uncovered it for another 10 on 375 degrees. And this is what it looked like when it came out. Um, I went ahead and plated one sixth of this casserole for myself along with some French bread that we had. And for the kids, I also gave them salad with salad dressing. Very good meal, easy to prepare. And it was another winner. Well, that's all I have for this episode of What's for Dinner. I hope you guys enjoy. Take care.